about your families and the good times he had with you. He loved and valued all of his friendships. I feel like I really know many of you, even though we have never met. Georgia to fish, and um, the time he gave Ben his first beer. <laughs> uh, seriously, who hasn't seen him celebrating Georgia's birthday in such a special way each year, or the pride he felt when sharing Ben's prom pictures, or how he attended every concert and was always their biggest fan? His pride in his kids was so evident, and he and so many of you have also recently shared this about him. Um, Greg was also a great husband. I was so happy he found Rachel. I know so many of you commented on relationship goals when watching of the story of their life unfold. You just knew they had such immense respect for each other. What a great love story. And Greg was a great son. He had so much respect for the time his father served in the Air Force during the Korean War and never forgot to reach out on Father's Day to let his dad know he was special. And so much of the person Greg was came from our mom. As my nephew Brian mentioned to me the other day, Greg was gregarious. Anyone that knows our mom knows this came from her. Greg was an exceptional brother. He wasn't just my brother, he was my friend. And this happened gradually over time because he cultivated the relationship. He and Rachel made sure to visit us in New York very regularly. And these visits were some of the best times of my life. Getting to know Rachel, I learned that not only is she beautiful and smart, but warm, funny, and loving, and also a very great cook. Yes, <laughs> behind you. And so easy to get along with. It was great getting to know Georgia and Ben. Georgia is so talented, and she is such a strong, vibrant personality, so much like her mom. And Ben is such a fine young man, and his mannerisms remind me of Greg so much. Greg wanted our families to be close, even though we lived 3,000 miles away, and this made him the best uncle as well. Both of my kids have so many good memories of time spent with Greg and his family. Um, he also spoke of Rocky and Ryan so often, and Anita. I know he was so proud of them. When Greg wasn't in New York or I wasn't in California, we had many long talks and hundreds, hundreds of texts back and forth. We often talked about politics or books or our kids, or he would tell me that the TikTok I sent him that I thought was hysterical wasn't funny at all. <laughs> and Greg arranged Zoom calls when we couldn't travel and sent birthday message that, messages that were warm and funny and heartwarming at the same time. I turned often to my baby brother for advice on so many things, and he was always there. He really appreciated beauty in a way most of us never do. Many times Greg shared a photograph or a perspective that was a new and thoughtful way to look at things, something as simple as the weeds growing on the side of the road. He made every memory special. Greg loved his life and had everything to live for. And when all of you poured out your hearts on his Facebook group, the way he responded was so typical for him. I saw posts where he remembered special moments with you, and I saw him respond with wishes for more time so he could have gotten to know you better. He tried to make each of us feel better while he was courageously confronting his own death. 
It seems so unfair that someone like this would be taken away from us just when he was hitting his stride, but it helps to realize he didn't waste a moment. I know how proud he was of the life that he built, and I was so proud of him too. So it's difficult and heartbreaking as it is to lose someone so special. We take great solace in knowing that he loved us, Rachel, Ben, and Georgia. Nobody will ever be able to tell me that his kids don't have his spirit living within them. I see his beautiful smile on Georgia's face all the time and his quiet thoughtfulness in Ben. And who better than Rachel to lead them the rest of the way? I look forward to seeing all their future accomplishments. I want to thank everyone here for being there for my brother through the hard times. Your support and friendship have meant the world to our family. Thank you. I want to apologize in advance. I was on my flight home from New York on Friday, and I figured I, I would text Rachel to see exactly how many things I had to say. She said, how does five to seven minutes sound? <laughs> and I texted back, you mean 57 minutes. <laughs> so I'm going to apologize in advance. You may want to get a drink. Because <laughs> uh, I got some stuff to say. And uh, the words are beautiful um, from Rhoda um, and from Debbie. Um, but I think my job is, as, as is always uh, in these kinds of situations, to be the comic relief. So. Let's celebrate, Greg. He gave me very specific instructions that this is to be a celebration of his life. So let's go. Uh, so let's go. It's an honor. Um, I'm going to share some of the, the memories of Greg and I in, in the early years, because that's where um, you know I feel I I am the foremost expert on Gregory Stevens' law. And we call those years PR, pre-Rachel. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. As Rachel mentioned, I was a seven-year-old kid, just showed up from Long Island, New York, um, and Rhoda heard my accent, and being from Brooklyn, um, welcomed me into their house. I didn't know that Greg was there at the time. I just thought I'd go bust David and uh, my brother's balls as a young brother likes to do. And she brought me into the house and uh, and I turned the corner and there was Greg. He was my Heidi. And it was love at first sight. <laughs> and uh, we became um, from that moment, really from that moment, um, very close to the next, next number of years. Basically inseparable. We, 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 we formed a support group, if you will, from uh, uh, little brothers that get beaten up a lot. Um, there was a lot of that going on. But um, I love being down at the Blocks house. Uh, you could, they would call it, uh, in this day and age, free range. My house is not free range. I'm the youngest of six kids. Uh, my, my sisters are over there, four older sisters, um, who doted on me. So Greg liked to be up at my house. It's for doting of older sisters, two of whom are blonde. Um, and I like to be down at Greg's house. And I tended to win. Um, much less chaos down there. I would sometimes go down to the Blocks house to find an open bathroom. Uh, it was, and it was nice down there. And I don't know how much you guys know about the Blocks, but they always had some cool shit. Really cool stuff. Forefront of technology, VCR, right? Uh, <laughs> A camcorder, uh, and they were the first actually yes, to have um, cable television. <laughs> in my house, no, she has been hardly at TV. Um, so I would spend the night down you know, at Greg's house, and cable TV meant Cinemax. Um, and God dang, we had to stay up till midnight. It was like a military shift, waking each other up to try to stay awake until midnight until the soft board came on. And, uh, and we did it. We did it. And it's funny because the blocks had uh, one cat, sometimes two cats, right? Yeah. Scout, yeah. 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 I hate cats. Um, I get allergic. My eyes would swell up. I'd sneeze. I'd come home from spending the night at the Blocks house. My mom's like, you're okay. I'm like, I'm great. I don't want to spend the night tonight again. 
And uh, and that was it. The, the blocks, um, we, we, from there after we kind of ingrained ourselves in, in each other's family, I went uh, with the block, we loaded up the family truckster and uh, went out to see uh, Leslie in Vail. She had, was there and um, that's where we kind of uh, fostered our love of skiing together. Barry and I, and my sister Susan would take us on the weekends to uh, local mountains and we would ski there. Uh, and Greg similarly would come on trips with us up to uh, the Sierra Nevada mountains to go skiing as well. In fact, we were so ingrained, I think Greg came to a Christmas mask with me once. That's true. <laughs> I remember uh, before his mar mitzvah helping him with his Hebrew that he had to learn. So that's, that's really how uh, ingrained we were uh, in each other's families. Still gone. <laughs> so um, my entire family was very fond of Greg, and, and if you, you all know him, you know how easy that is. Um, to be very fond of Greg. He was much more agreeable than I, I think my sisters and maybe my brother yeah. would admit yeah. that. Also my mom uh, would admit that too. He was the uh, obedient, respectful son that she never had. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I remember this distinctly as we would go out as teenagers. Um, she would always ask me, is Greg going? I said, yes, you can come back at midnight. If Greg wasn't going, it was 10.30. And that's who Greg is, right? He was, uh, he was a fun chaperone. Um, <laughs> a fun chaperone. Um, so, still going. Um, there's, there's bits of memories that come back to me when I think about growing up with Greg, and I just have some listed. Um, and it's going to seem rambling, but hopefully, uh, hopefully it's funny. Um, Kung Fu, remember this? Bruce Lee movies. We used to watch Bruce Lee movies at Drake's house. Uh, we bought nunchucks and throwing stars and beat each other and sharpened the stars down to make them stick right. into wood. You remember that, David? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and my brother actually went on to break my arm in Drake's living room. <laughs> doing Kung Fu. I never knew that. Kevin, I never knew uh, that. Yeah, break dancing. <laughs> we were um, early adopters of the parachute pants. Um, we had a proper break dancing crew. The crew's name <laughs> was Data Break, which I guess was derived from our love of breaking and data. Right? <laughs> uh, David came up with it's futuristic. It. Yes. Uh, Greg's break dance name was Skittle. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and his break dance signature move was the turtle. Here, hold it. I would pull something. I actually tried to do my windmills. That was my signature move. Yeah. And pulled a hamstring. Uh, when, uh, so we had this notion that we could get on Star Search. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And they had a VHS tape, so we were going to make right. demo tapes. Uh, I remember uh, that. And get on Star Search. It just started in 1993. But so what happened is we sucked. <laughs> Find that, burn it. Awful. That Dungeons and Dragons. Dave was our dungeon master, um, and that was super nerdy. Um, we took that to do like where we started doing some magic, some black magic. And uh, do you remember this, Dave? One time we did like a seance and we conjured up some demons. And Dave's uh, buddy. Uh, as he fell down, oh my hair went on fire. Oh my god. That? <laughs> yeah. That happened. <laughs> that was Jason Munchie. Hair went on fire. Next one, arcades. You guys remember that? Um, there was an arcade firehouse. Um, this is just when, you remember that uh, scooter you used to have, that red scooter? Mm -hmm. We used to steal that from you and uh, <laughs> drive up to the arcade. Um, and it was called, I remember it very distinctly, Fezzy Wigs. That was off of El Toro Road. Oh, Toro Fezzy Wigs. Yeah. You remember that? You know what Fezzy Wigs is. Um, and uh, that was for sure run by a pedophile. <laughs> um, it was like, um, it had to be, right? Uh, we played Tron. Uh, Greg liked Dig Dug. I remember that yeah. very distinctly. Couldn't get him off the Dig Dug machine. Um, yeah, but uh, definitely about that as well. But it was probably worth all the free tokens. <laughs> Um, 
Okay, okay this one is, it's, it's funny. Uh, it says, uh, I wrote down, cruise the theaters and pick up chicks. Oh, yeah. I definitely cruise the theaters. <laughs> Not so much to pick up chicks. Um, but we felt pretty cool. Aaron had a, a two-seat white Pontiac Fiero. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. With a goddamn cell phone in it. Yes. <laughs> we had a car phone back then, so we would pick it up. That's we got busted for making a call once. We pretended like we were on the call. Those were expensive. Um, and then, uh, I mean, uh, you could go on hoops at Olivewood, poker at the Dickerson's house, strippers at the Dubin's house. You could go on and on. But, uh, strippers at the Dubin's house seems like a good place to stop. <laughs> uh, but anybody who uh, shared those days with Greg and I, um, can attest that we were uh, we were all better for having grown up with Greg. And then he met Rachel. He called me. He, he told me about Rachel that he had met Miguel. And I swear, we hung up, and the phone rang like 30 minutes later, and he had proposed to her. He knew something was good when he saw it. Um, he didn't do me any favors. I'd been dating my wife for five years at the time. <laughs> <laughs> he did the right thing. Uh, so uh, we'll call this period AR after Rachel. Um, he really spread his wings and flew. Um, you know, knowing Greg uh, as a kid, you know, kind of the shy guy. Um, I know some of you wouldn't believe that now but he really spread his wings and fly, and I think Rachel gave him the confidence to, uh, to do that and, and, to, and to engage in the career and create the uh, deep relationships that he has with so many of you that are here today. Um, so I think I'm, am I over my five or seven? <laughs> You're good. Okay, um, so Greg and I were friends for 43 years. And, uh, yeah, I'm bragging. That's 86% of my life. And uh, I don't think there's anyone else here that can say that. And I feel... We beat you. I feel great. <laughs> friends. I said friends. No blood. <laughs> friends. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we moved our way in and out of each other's lives seamlessly. You know, as, as you can imagine, for over 43 years, to have a friendship with somebody, you know, we would move away, but we always kind of found our way back to one another. Um, despite I think he tried to change his cell phone once and move on the internet, but I found him. <laughs> but uh, our adult years, you know, um, we found our way back to each other, and uh, he helped me through some tough times as an adult, um, and uh, and in and I and I think I helped him through some here at, at the end of his life. But the uh, you know the the relationship with Greg was always very natural. He was. You know, this might sound silly and and maybe um, a bit trite, but but like a, a warm sweater that you find in, in your closet. You know, you put it on, it smells good. Um, you feel good wearing it. You know what it's gonna deliver to you, and that's kind of what I think about with Brett, a warm sweater. Uh, he lived an exceptional life. He did it the right way. And um, a couple weeks ago, as I was sitting with him, um, I think this was when you were up with uh, Ben. Um, he, he, um, ah, I call it a revival. He was feeling good. I, I, I told him I was coming over. He said, I'm going to watch the Padre game. We'll watch it outside. And, uh, I'm like, is the TV up there? And he goes, no. Um, I go, well, I'll take it up when I get there. I get there. He had brought the TV, carried it up the stairs, put it up. And, uh, we watched the Padre game together, uh, with Matt. Um, um, but he did it the right way. And, and I asked him on that. That that, uh, that that visit, um, it, if he regretted anything, I was trying to, you know, get some get some wisdom from Greg and, and, and about my own life as, as he's passed me so many um, smart things over the years. Um, and he flatly said no. He said no. Imagine that. I think, I think that's I think that's right. You know, it's amazing. It's something. Obviously, that that we can all strive for, but but I think it's true. Unbelievable. I mean, he did it right. So, and I'm upset. I'd like right now everybody to uh, raise a glass. I have this. 
I have bird in my pocket. <laughs> Um, and I'm going to drink this because he would have wanted me to. Um, but everybody, uh, raise your glass, close your eyes, and uh, picture um, Greg's smile. Picture Greg's smile or the last moment that you had with Greg. Um, and then smile back at him because that's what he would have wanted. Smile back. Lahayim to Greg. <laughs> Okay. Just hold it up to the mouth and it works. Alright. Um, I'm Josh, I'm Greg's friend. I can't prove this, but I'm fairly confident that with the exception of Rachel, Greg slept with me more than anybody else. <laughs> Let me explain why. As Rachel said, we met in college. And Going to college in the 90s was an amazing thing, let me tell you, because cell phones did not exist. So we had no pictures and cameras at our disposal to highlight all of our shenanigans. College was also great in the 90s because people actually read newspapers. And because they read newspapers, businesses advertised in newspapers, which meant we had a budget, like a good budget. We had such a good budget that somebody would go on every football road trip. Usually it was two people, or three, or four, and photographers. So our budget was good, but it wasn't amazing, because it's not like we all had our own room. So it was two people to a room, or in some cases, three people, or four people, or sometimes even five or six people to a room. And so as a result, I was thinking about all the different places that Greg and I slept together. And it's like a who's who of the whack in the Mountain West Conference. Provo, Utah, Salt Lake City, Utah, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Las Vegas multiple times, Fresno, a bunch of journalism conventions all over the place, and then even as adults, Tucson, when we were in the Sweet 16 a few years ago, because when you slept with somebody that many times, even when you can afford your own place, it's just more fun. <laughs> what made Greg so great to travel with is that, number one, he hit deadline. <coughs> Number two, his stories were good, so they required very little editing. And number three, he did not snore. <laughs> a lot of people snored at the Daily Aztec. Greg Block did not snore. So he was the perfect companion. And then afterwards, he was fun. So I don't know about you, but for me, when I was in college, I had my fun friends and I had my responsible friends. So the responsible friends that's who you want in your class when you miss and you need the notes. That's who you want when you have a group assignment. And then the fun friends, that's self-explanatory. So the responsible friends, that's who you wanted in your life Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe Thursday until about noon. The fun friends, that's who you wanted Sunday, Saturday, Friday, Thursday, most Wednesdays as well. Most but the thing about Greg is that he was fun and he was responsible. So you wanted him in your life every day. You wanted him on Monday, and you wanted him on Sunday, and you wanted him every day in between to be a part of your life. Pretty sure Greg was with us for two years in the Daily House. And when he first started, he was, he was good, and then he got better, and he got better. Is this working? Yeah, it's working. <laughs> and then he got so good that I remember his last semester. His last year, he wrote football and he wrote men's basketball. You write football and men's basketball for a campus newspaper, you're the main. His byline was in the Daily Aztec pretty much every single day for the entire year. And I remember that last year, he had always told us, I'm going into PR. This journalism thing is just fun, it's just something to do. I want to get the experience of writing, be on the other side of it. And I remember going, great, you're good. Like, no, you got a chance. Like, you're so much better than everybody else. Are you sure you don't want to get into journalism? And he said, nope, he had a plan. Greg always had a plan, and I'm glad he did not listen to me. Um, because we all know what he accomplished in his life. It's not a surprise to me one day. I, I don't know what he was gonna do, or where, or whom, but I knew that he was gonna be really good at it. I knew he was gonna be successful. He was just one of those guys that was just going places. And you wanted to be around him because you're hoping you could learn something from him, or just be along for the ride with him. And so it was not a surprise at all that he became what he became.
Greg and I have not lived in the same city since 1996. But we've still seen each other at least one time every year. Sometimes two, three, four, five times. And I know almost all of those were at Aztec Games. I know. But still, we would find a way. He was the type of friend where if I said I'm coming into town, he'd find a way in his very busy schedule. You guys know how busy he is with all of his important jobs and how stressful they can be and how time consuming and as a husband and as a father, but Greg would always find time. And we have a blast. We talk about the aspect supports. We talk about life, we talk about jobs. We talk about his kids and he would beam with pride when he's talking about his kids. And then Rachel would say, all right, Susan, are you dating? Tell me if you're dating, let me see photos, I need to approve. <laughs> when Greg met Rachel, he became even better. He was already just the best dude and then he became even better. And then they had Ben and Georgia, and they became even better than that. I remember uh, it was past April. So I was seeing this girl coming into San Diego, and I want her to meet some of my friends. But I don't want to overwhelm her, so it's really important that I pick right people to meet. And it was a no-brainer. It's Greg and Rachel. Of course I'm gonna meet Greg and Rachel. So we got together and we had this awesome dinner and we ate and we drank and we laughed and we cursed and we figured out all the world's problems and we just had the best time. And I'm in the car, go back to the hotel and the girl says to me, I don't know why, but I thought your friends were gonna be douchebags. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, but they weren't. She said, she said, I liked them. She said, no, I really, really liked them. She goes, I liked them from the minute we sat down until the minute we left. And I said, of course, it's great and rich. What's it to like? They're so intelligent and they're charming and they're witty and they're so great together. And Greg told us the story of how he, he put together these uh, young mixers for professionals. And I think he did two or three, he met Rachel and then he was done with the mixer. That was it, that was the whole point. <laughs> so it's done. And Rachel told us the story about how they were starting to get serious and sorry if I messed up the story, Rachel, but, but you said, I think it was to your sister. Well, Greg's really not my type. And your sister said something like, well, Maybe Greg should be your type. Look at the guys you used to date. <laughs> and so, I mean, they're the ultimate in hashtag couple goals. And it was such a great night. And Greg was the kind of guy you could count on. You could count on him to hit deadline. You could count on him to write good stories. I could count on him if I'm coming into town that we could meet for breakfast or meet for lunch. If I wanted to go to a football game, I know he'd be there and he'd have. And I knew that you would have a tailgate, and I'd have a bunch of food and drinks and meet new people and be fun. And most of the time I could probably get a free ticket. And I could count on him when I'm bringing someone to San Diego who I care a lot about. Past stance, it didn't work out, that's another story. Uh, that I could count on him to make sure that we had a really good night. Because he was just the best. I want to close by letting you know about to wrap it back to the Daily Aztec. Um, there's some QR codes that are around here. There's a scholarship and endowment that has been set up for journalism students at San Diego State. As you know, Greg did not pursue a career in journalism, but he never stopped championing student journalism. It meant a lot to him. And the Daily Aztec meant so much to all of us. I think I speak on behalf of everyone who's here from the Daily Aztec and those who could not make it, that it changed our lives. And the number of people who I can tell had the same experience as me. And that is, I remember going to the PSFA building when it was at the time, and I didn't quite have the courage to walk in the door yet. Kind of peek in, there's that side door, who's in there? Didn't quite have the courage to step inside. remembered how nervous I was day one whenever somebody new would come in. And it was weird with Greg because he was two years older than me, but yet, because I'd been there longer, I was technically his boss. I, I don't know. I told him where to put a comma or how to write in and out of a quote, and he taught me lots of life lessons. And Jen and I were just talking about this. It can be really intimidating going to a school of 35,000 students. You're trying to figure out where do I fit in.